In July of 1986, Tecmo brought us one of its most popular puzzle games, Solomon's Key, or Solomon no Kagi as it was originally called in Japan. You control a sorcerer known as Dana. You must overcome unlimited enemy spawning, challenging level designs, a countdown timer, instant death from any physical contact with enemies, and limited ways to dispatch enemies. The story is that Dana is set to receive Solomon's key to restore the world to light from demons that were accidentally released. The object of the game is to advance through the 50 rooms by acquiring a key to a door that leads to the next room before the timer runs out. Dana can run, jump, create or destroy orange blocks adjacent to him as well as create fireballs to destroy demons. The orange blocks can also be destroyed by hitting them with the character's head twice. Along the way Dana can acquire items to upgrade his firepower and extra lives, as well as items that award the bonus points and unlock hidden rooms. The first port was handled directly by Tecmo for the Famicom on July 30th, 1986. For an early game for the system, this isn't bad at all. We've got recognisable music, the sound effects are close enough and the game looks like the arcade, in a much simpler style of course. I'd say the jumping isn't as fluid as the arcade version. That doesn't mean it is bad per se, just not as sharp. In 1988, Probe Software ported Solomon's Key to a bunch of systems in Europe. Let's start off with the ZX Spectrum port. It's crap. Simple as that. The level design differs in some cases, the enemy placements are different and it feels sluggish. Ok ok, maybe it's not straight up crap, but it could have been so much better than this. Now this is more like it, the Amstrad CPC version features the arcade design and the presentation. In game music and get this, two button controls, holy crap. Unfortunately it's a little slow and the location of the block spawning is very iffy at times. But look at this compared to the ZX Spectrum version, I know which one I'd choose especially with that cool line raster effect at the beginning of each stage. Sadly Commodore 64 owners were not as fortunate as CPC owners. Sure this version is faster but it lacks the arcade presentation and playability. The enemies move too fast in this port, changing the way the game is played. 
I wouldn't really recommend this one. The ST version is the only 16-bit port of Solomon's Key, so it should be the best version, but sadly it is not. This one plays very much like the Commodore 64 release. I wonder if they were both developed by the same programmer. Hard to say, as there is no data on the C64's programmer, only the musician and the load screen art designer. iSystem Tokyo made a fantastic port to Sega's Mark III Master System, which saw a Japanese only release on April 17, 1988. Such a shame that this port never got a Western release, as I feel it would have sold quite well. It has the arcade presentation, feels good to play, and even looks better than the NES version in my opinion. This game also has the honour of being one of only two third-party Japanese released Master System games. The other being Rygar, another Tecmo arcade game. That game was ported by Silo, who were actually just Tecmo under a different name to get around Nintendo's awful exclusive contracts. See, it wasn't just the Nintendo of America that did that. Known as Jipang on the PC Engine, this port was developed by ARK and released on December 14th, 1990. The name Jipang, yes that's how the word is pronounced, was at one point the name of Japan. In fact, Japan had many names before being known as Japan, or Nippon or Nihon, as we say in Japanese. Anyway, we're getting off topic here. This Jipang is based upon a TV show from what I understand. As you can see, the game is 100% Solomon's Key, but now with different level designs and a whole new look to the stages. Five years after the Famicom release, there was a Famicom Disk System version. This came out on January 25th, 1991 and was handled directly by Tecmo. And guess what? It's the exact same game that was released five years earlier on cartridge. Not cool Tecmo. Or are we to blame Tecmo? While the Japanese wiki mentions this as an official release, other sources on the net point in the direction that this is a Hong Kong bootleg. It would also explain why the title screen still says 1987. Game Boy also got a version of Solomon's Key on April 5th, 1991. This port was handled by Graphic Research and isn't really a port, but more of a reimagining. The game goes under the name of Solomon's Club. The 
core gameplay is almost the same apart from now you press a button to jump. The game also features a shop in which you can buy all manner of extra power ups or lives. I do like this version, especially when playing on a real Game Boy, it just works so well. Give it a try if you can. Graphic Research also handled the Game Boy Color port, which saw a Japanese release on September 29th, 2000. This was renamed and themed to Monster Rancher in the US. This is the version we are looking at here. In Japan the game was simply called Solomon. As you can see, this looks rather ugly compared to the lovely Game Boy version. It also plays differently. Now we have scrolling areas which to be honest, work quite well. I just can't get over the beta looks though after playing the gorgeous Game Boy version. Let's take a look at all those versions of Solomon's key running side by side. 